Thank you for listening to the message today. We would love for you to share in the comments how God is speaking to you through his word. If you would like to join our online church community, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon on our YouTube page so you're notified when we post a new weekly sermon. You can also learn more about The Rock Church by visiting our website, rockag.com. If you are in the Scottsdale, Phoenix area, make sure to come visit us for Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. We would love to meet you in person. And if you would like to support this ministry today, you can donate by visiting our website and clicking the giving tab at the top of the page or by texting the amount you would like to give to the number 84321. Then follow the instructions in the text reply. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. And I usually don't do this, but I think I will today. I've titled the message, A River of Holy Spirit Power. Church, we need a river of Holy Spirit power. Can I get a big amen? Amen. Now hang with me there for a little while. Just just hang with me. Let's see how I've got to do this. I changed my message up even this morning. In 1906, a young African-American man named Joseph Seymour He had graduated from a Bible school. He'd been called to pastor, and he began to pastor a church of 20 believers in Los Angeles, California. In that Bible school, and it hadn't been taught really publicly in a great way, actually for hundreds of years. Hundreds of years. He was teaching on divine healing. Can you believe that doctrine got hidden for hundreds of years? Not completely, but for the most part. He also was teaching the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Those were two of his primary topics. Now, he had been taught that in Bible school, yet he himself, although he's pastoring a church now, and this is what he's teaching over and over again, week in and week out, he hasn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence and speaking in tongues, but he believed it because it was in the Word of God. It's a great story. He arrived at church one night only to find the church doors that they had rented for a small price padlocked. Thankfully, there was a couple in his church that said, you can come to our house and have church at Bonnie Bray Street there in Los Angeles, California. Seymour continued to preach the Word of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. And guess what began to happen? People began to get healed, filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues. Finally, after many weeks passed back, guess what happened to Brother Seymour? He got filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. As the Bible says says. This began a phenomenon all over L.A. The little house got so crowded they were meeting even on the porch and leaving the doors and windows open and the porch collapsed. I tell you, I'd like to get so many people getting filled with the Holy Spirit in this building that a wall would collapse or something, as long as it didn't fall on you. Nobody was hurt. They then decided that they would rent a vacant building at 312, say it with me for those of y'all know, Azusa Street. Now, God was doing so many beautiful things. Although Seymour was African American, His church was not predominantly African-American. As the spirit began to move, it was Hispanic and Asian and white. All colors and all tribes begin to attend that church where God is moving. And I believe this. And we're a multicultural church. And I don't have any problem with churches that feel called to be with their own tribe. I believe even that's a God thing. We like all tribes under the same roof. But I know when the Holy Spirit is moving that all tribes get along. Can I get another big amen? 
Amazing thing. And that was a time where race was really an issue. And there was a lot of racial reconciliation because there was a lot of racial segregation in those days. Some, one eyewitness said the color line was washed away by the blood. And I know all of y'all have that heart. Another participant that attended the meeting, and I quote, and if you can pull up the pictures. Don't Google it now. Listen to me, but Google it later. I should have pulled a picture. Uh, it, it was a barn. It had been used for a barn stable. He said the first, and I quote, from the first time I entered, I was struck by the blessed spirit that prevailed in the meeting, such a feeling of unity and humility among the children of God. And I say, dear Lord, in this hour, with all that's going on in our world, that's what I was talking about early, touch us with a spirit of humility and love. Another one said a couple of years later, one of the leaders said, the Pentecostal power, when you sum it all up, is just more of God's love. Give us a baptism of the river of the Holy Spirit that causes us to love others supernaturally. Hallelujah. Brother Seymour was a humble man. Right about that time, a few years in, the great earthquake that you even hear about from time to time today struck in San Francisco. It was devastating. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people were killed just a few hours away from the north. And there were a lot of people that believed it was God's judgment. Some did, some didn't, but a lot of people did. And guess what happened? People begin to run to the church. They begin to hear about something going on down in L.A. in an old horse barn where people were being saved, given hope, delivered, set free. And this crazy thing, they're being filled with the Holy Spirit and they're speaking in other languages. But a lot of those people that walked believed God was judging at that time. And guess what? They ran to where they felt like Jesus would be. I feel like, and I don't have time to talk about it this morning, and I've said it all along though, the Holy Spirit has really been setting up something this last two years, and it's intensifying out there in a lot of negative ways, but the Holy Spirit is setting something up, and the Spirit-filled church has got to be ready. I believe it. I went over this story for weeks over and over and over. And in my heart, I said, it sounds like something that's happening today again. Think about this, and I don't have long to talk about it. The timing of it all. In those days, it, the press had just begun to go coast to coast and around the world. Newspaper people, journalists. It, 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 just, it wasn't like that before then. I mean, there were telegraphs. You could get a newspaper a month later. I mean, uh, in the 19th century. But in the beginning of the 20th century, the news as we know it was beginning to blossom. So guess what happened? Journalists, not just from America, but all around the world began to flock to L.A. to see what was going on in that little horse stable. And most of them come critical. If you, have you listened to any news channels or read a few newspapers the last few years, much less the last few days? I think what the enemy means for bad, that God's turning around for good, the Holy Spirit, let them come see what we're about. Let them come see what Jesus is about. Let them come see why we don't go for killing babies in the womb. So they begin to come from all over the world because of the negative publicity. Amazing what God can do. It reminded me on a side note of Mr. Gutenberg when he uh, 
uh, invented the printing press back in 1450. About that same time, William Tyndale began to translate the Bible in English. About that same time, Martin Luther began to translate the Bible into German. About the same time, it could be printed and people, 98% of the people didn't even have a Bible and now they could have a Bible. Huh. I'm telling you, church, God's in control. God hasn't lost control of your personal life. God hasn't contr- lost control of what's happening in our country or the world. Our God is in control and the Holy Spirit is moving. There was a young journalist, negative, tongue talk, what is this? Tongue talking, come from the paper from England to see, come across uh, an ocean and a continent to get there and guess what happened to him? And he come to write about everything that was wrong with it. And a young lady that broke out in tongues in the service. And after the service, he run that young lady down and said, How, where are you from? Uh, my original language was, I don't remember if it was Romania or Germany or something, it, although he had come from England. He, she said, why do you ask? She, she, she said, I was just filled with the Holy Spirit, with evidence and speaking in tongues. He said, you were, you were speaking my language. It happens every now and then. See, I believe the Lord's up to something. I believe the Lord's up to something. Jesus said in John 7, 38, whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Jesus was talking about the blessed Holy Spirit. And Jesus didn't promise a mere trickle. He promised a river. Why would you settle for a trickle when you can have a river, church? A mighty, rushing, life-giving river of the presence of the Holy Spirit flowing inside God's people. The Amazon River starts with a trickle. It starts out a little trickles in the ground up in the Andes, and then it turns into creeks, and then it turns into other rivers until it flows and becomes one river with speed and power. Did you know the Amazon River flows for 3,600 miles, 1,000 miles longer than our nation is wide, and it empties 1.4 million gallons into the Atlantic Ocean, and it pushes fresh water 60 miles out into salt water. What a power! Jesus didn't promise a trickle to the church. He never promised just a little bit to the church. Jesus promised a stream that will flow inside us and through us to a lost and dying world. A river that heals, saves, delivers, makes whole. Somebody give me an amen. I said it three times. I'm headed to the res for a couple days. I feel like we're already in camp meeting. They wrapped one up up in Apache world. How thirsty are you? How much have you settled for? He promised a river for all of God's believers. But it is somewhat conditional on how thirsty you are. How much of the Holy Spirit do you want? And let me say this on the other hand. There's no limitations with Almighty Holy Spirit. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14 and 17, because see, he's a river of indwelling presence. Even the spirit of truth, Jesus said, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him for he dwells in you. 
It's an indwelling presence. Even the Old Testament talked about a river that would come upon you and a river that would be within you, upon you and in you. First Samuel 10 and 6 said, then the spirit of the Lord will rush upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. First Samuel 16 and 13 says this, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord rushed up on, sounds like a river to me, rushed upon David from that day forward and Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The Spirit of God come upon him then. The Spirit of God come upon him in the day of Pentecost and the Spirit of God is still the same Spirit of God that's the same yesterday and today and forever and the Spirit of God will come upon you now. Ezekiel 37 and 14 says this, and isn't it neat how the scripture from the first book of the Bible to the last book of the Bible saying the same thing. Ezekiel 37, 14 said, I will put my spirit not upon, but within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you will know that I'm the Lord. I will I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. God will do it. God is doing it. God has always kept doing it. Somebody, somebody, somebody say hallelujah. I've already amen you to death. Try to stay away from too many amens. I just let you do that on your own. In Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, it said the Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost come to rest up on them and they were all filled inside with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in other languages the Spirit of God like never before like never before like right now like at the Rock Church wants to pour himself out like a river on you up on you and inside you because he's an indwelling presence Ron you said the other day I got him on the inside <laughs> it's Bible study we were out in the hall Oh, hallelujah. I almost sound Pentecostal, don't I? Now, old time Pentecostal is hallelujah. Old time Pentecost is glory to God. Oh, and you spit just like that. Everybody say glory to God. You got it. You got it. I belong to Jesus, don't you? Romans 8 and 16 says the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. The Holy Spirit gives an assurance. If you've asked Christ into your heart, the Holy Spirit will assure you over and over and over and over. It is well with your soul. The Holy Spirit is always moving, always enabling, always empowering, always enduing, always equipping, always sanctifying, always washing. Hallelujah. He's at work. He's active. 2 Corinthians 3.18. I'm talking fast. I need to slow down. All right. I'm going to slow down. How y'all doing? I need to take a breath. God's word is so good. Pastor Christian, you blessed me today as you were transitioning us into our next level of worship, singing from giving, and he just, scripture was pouring out of him. Scripture was coming out of him as he led us in praise at the end of our singing this morning. And I went with you, bro. I went with you. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 says, and we all, that's, those Corinthians, Paul was right, they must have been from Kentucky. And we all. <laughs> we all going to go over here and y'all going to do that. I never knew that. I'm going to have to research that. Some of those Corinthians were from Kentucky. <laughs> they had to be. Maybe Paul had a little southern boy in him. I don't know. He wrote it. Isn't God's word good? Do you feel the tangible presence of God here this morning? You need to open your heart to a river. And 
and we all with unveiled faces behold the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. There's levels of glory. Oh my goodness. For, look, where, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Galatians 5 and 22, and we've been in the fruit of Spirit. We got another fruit to go. We're doing an extensive study on Wednesday night, 38 lessons, deep dive study on the Holy Spirit. So through the, it's been rich, it's been good, and God's showing up. I found that when you talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit shows up. You teach about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit shows up. It's amazing. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Wow. He is a river that comes upon us. He is a river that dwells within us. Could you use a baptism of love this morning? Could you lose a baptism of joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness? Could the world we live in use a river of all of that? Yes. Hallelujah. Number two, he's a river of instruction. He's a teacher. He's a counselor. John 16 and 13 says, when the spirit of truth comes, the words of Christ, he will guide you into all truth. You need guidance this morning? Ha ha. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Lord is a guide. He's a guidance counselor. He's a leader. As you walk, I could use, I need a river of his leadership on a regular basis. It means that he will lead us the right way. He will never lead you the wrong way. He'll never lead you astray. He'll help you make the day-to-day -day decisions that he will always lead you to truth. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit will always lead you to truth. And in that case the truth is always grounded in the word of God that's why we got to keep everything everything we believe everything we live has to be grounded in the word of God some of you may need to change your views this morning some of you at home may need to change your views there's a oh I keep going I almost got off track John 14 and 16 said but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father, Jesus again, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I have said to you. We Look, we need the leadership of Jesus. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. But he's a helper. I love, that's just a good, simple word that I can relate to. Sometimes I just need help. Actually, just most of the time, I just need help. Careful. He's a helper. There's seasons you go through, you need a river of help. When you don't know what to pray, I know what to pray when I don't know what to pray. Help, Jesus. Help, Holy Spirit. He's a helper. He'll help you at your business. He'll help you in your relationships. He'll help you in all things. And he provides liberty and freedom. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 said, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, say it with me, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's illumination. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, blinders come off and darkness comes off of you and is driven back. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's regeneration and salvation and forgiveness of sins. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's sanctification. Where, oh, I need to be living this way, but I'm living that way. Help, Jesus, help. And the Spirit of the Lord come and make you into a man of God and shape you into a woman of God. There 
There's freedom and liberty in the spirit of the Lord. He sanctifies us. He washes us. He forgives us. There's freedom. There's freedom from the bondage of sin. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's freedom from the captivity of Satan. There's freedom. He's a comforter. He's good. There's freedom from hell and the wrath that comes from not knowing Jesus Christ. There's freedom from damnation of sin. There's freedom because we are adopted and we're the children of God. Dear Lord, I need a baptism. I need a river of that freedom in my life. It's real, y'all. The Holy Spirit is real. It's so much more than speaking in tongues. It's everything. It makes Jesus a reality that you can taste and touch. Romans 5 and 5. Paul writing to the Romans said, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The love He provides. I need a river of love. I can be just as critical as the next critical person without a river of the love of Jesus Christ manifesting. I can get in the flesh just like anybody else without the freedom and the river of love that He will produce. The Spirit gives it to you. I said the Spirit gives it to you. Oh, our love in and of ourselves, even on our best day, how faint, how weak, and how great is His love that's manifesting in us. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Dove. Come River of God. Come Comforter. Come Helper. Come Holy Spirit and baptize us now. Oh, God. Houston used to call the, still does. He'd see the dove and say, hey, Dad, that's God's bird. You know, salvation is the main thing. Salvation is like a sip. The baptism of the Holy Spirit like drinking the whole glass. Oh, not. Oh. Oh, I, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Pastor, Lord Jesus, you know I I want to drink from the river. But uh oh, oh not. Not, I made that one up. I, I, why would we settle for? I'm going to tell you this: in the culture that we're in, and according to Scripture, it's not going to get better around the world. It's going to get worse, and God's going to get greater. You could you could val- validate that in God's Word. It was hard enough raising my children. In the culture we've been in the last 25, 30 years, it's going to be harder, young parents. And you're going to want to be full of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to want your children to be full of the Holy Spirit because they're facing things that you did not have to face. And it's only going to magnify. And I'm not trying to scare you. I promise you I'm not. I'm already praying for my future grandkids I know Deb and Dan are raising theirs, helping. Why would you settle for a sip when you can have the whole glass full? Salvation is like a slip and slide. And I'm not, it's the main thing. Please, but the Holy Spirit's like having the whole pool. Why would you be satisfied with the slip and slide when you can have the whole pool? 
You got to reach it. The Holy Spirit, it teaches us for edification and we need edification, build up, strengthening, et cetera. In original language is for edification and strengthening. And let me tell you how the Holy Spirit works. You got to charge up and recharge on a regular basis. I got this little vacuum cleaner, man, I'm so happy to have it. And I forgot to plug it in the other day and I went to, to vacuum a little carpet in my boat and that rascal wouldn't work at all. The, all the parts were there. It was just fine, but it wouldn't work. I had to plug it in and charge the battery. The other day I got, I'm, now I'm adding tools, you know, the batteries. I got out, it's been a few weeks, a couple months, and I love my new blower because I can do the back porch and the front porch more often instead of plugging in cords and blah, 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 blah. I just, and, and Darla really likes it. She's starting to notice how clean it's out, the outside is. I got out there and it died before I got my front porch done. And I got a front porch about the size of that, half the size of that entryway. It's dead. I went back and I realized my battery charger was turned off. It hadn't been charged. It, it looked like a blower. It acted like a blower for just a little bit. The buttons were working. It was in fine condition, but it had no power. Church, you don't sit there today or tomorrow or last year or next year. We're spirit-filled people, but we've got to be recharged on a regular basis to have the power we need. And I'm just, I'm not talking about the, thank God for the power inside the building. I'm thinking, talking about the power we're going to need to win, not just survive out there and all that mess, but to win because Jesus wins. Jesus wants to baptize his church again like a river. Have I convinced you yet? Because the spirit has to do that. He edifies us. That's why praying in tongues, there's about eight or 10 biblical reasons for tongues. One of them is for personal edification. You get home in your private devotional and you just start praying in tongues. I give you my word. When you get done, you'll feel stronger because it's something the Spirit's doing inside you. Lastly, he's a river of inspiration. John 15 and 26 said, when the helper comes, Jesus again, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. A little later in verse 27, it said, and the Holy Spirit shall bear witness. What does a witness do? He witnesses something or somebody doing thing or something that happened. Right? You have to have witnesses in a court of law. Witnesses that knew this person or saw the crime or witnesses. He said the spirit of truth, when he comes on believers, will bear witness about him and the substance of that is they will have consistent encounters with Jesus. Now I know it's not all about feelings, but I'm telling you, we probably need a few more feelings that's connected to the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is manifesting in your life, you're going to feel it emotionally and mentally with your service and your commitment, your dedication, your giving, if you're not obeying God's word. Revelation. Jesus showing up. You're reading the word and you've read, all of a sudden, Jesus is speaking to you. Holy Spirit said, I'll bear witness that Jesus is alive. I'll bear witness. You're in your prayer closet. It's been dry for a week and all of a sudden there's an energy inside of you. Holy Spirit is bearing witness to Jesus. 
We need revelation. What's God saying to you? What's God saying to you? What's God saying to you? What's God saying to the church? What's God saying about my family? What's God saying about my business? What's God saying? What's the Holy Spirit saying? Because he will bring revelation. And when you experience Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit through revelation, nobody can talk you out of it. Because you've experienced it in your heart. An encounter with Jesus has become a reality because of the Holy Spirit. 1 John 1, 1 through 3 says this, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, Jesus. Verse 2, the life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim it to you, the eternal life, which was the, with the Father and was made manifest to us. Verse three, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm gonna go away and be with the Father and I'm gonna see the Holy Spirit spirit where you can touch Jesus where you can know Jesus where you can hear Jesus where you can see Jesus where he can touch you and you can touch him we need a manifestation of the touch of Jesus Christ on our heart and the Holy Spirit makes that a reality oh hope let me have a sip pastor I'm doing just fine. I'm blessed. And you leak what little sip you've got. Well, we leak anyway. That river has to keep flowing. We got to recharge every day. And let me say this, and we sing so many Jesus songs today, and some old ones. How about that old stuff? Hallelujah, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And I did, I tried my best to. The subject of the Holy Spirit will always be Jesus. And we sing it so many ways this morning. There's power. In the name of Jesus. If the Holy Spirit's pointing somebody to anybody other than Jesus, it's not in there. The Holy Spirit will also always magnify Jesus and the Father. Jesus said, I'm going to take from what's the Father and I'm going to give it to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can give it to the church. If we had time for testimony and I gave y'all 10 minutes each, we'd be here till Wednesday. Because I do know men, and I've challenged you in some way with some questions and different things and illustrations, because I feel like I'm supposed to challenge you. But we would testify 24-7. I don't know how long it lasts, because y'all couldn't stop at 10 minutes each. Because you've tasted, you've experienced the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, I will bear witness. There's a strength in the witness. And again, it's the empowerment. Most of the time, that's the one thing that we hear priests and talk. Guys, not because I preached it, this has been a buffet this morning. I'm sure that there's others that could preach it better than I do. But there can be no witness on our part without the baptism, without the power of the Holy Spirit. Not one that brings depth and conviction. Not one that loves like Jesus loves. 
And the scripture that we all love says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Dear Lord, dear Lord, Holy Spirit, this church, you're the best church on the planet, full of so many good people that love Jesus. We need more power. We. I didn't exclude myself. We more, need more power to do what God is calling us to do. We need a river. Dear Jesus, send the power. The old song we sing, oh, oh Lord, send the power just now and baptize everyone. We need the power to come upon us and come out of our bellies like streams of living water. We need the power of the assurance of our salvation. You can't question your salvation and know what I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit will give you an assurance. We need a river. We need a baptism of the truth. And thank God we have this precious book called the Word of God. That's our foundation. We need a baptism of truth. A baptism of truth. We need a baptism of guidance in this time as we operate and move as a church. We need a baptism and a river of help in our personal lives and as a church on a consistent basis. And dear God, there's as many people sometimes in this church struggling with sin and bondage as outside the church. Dear Holy Spirit, Holy Dove of God, send a baptism that will fall upon us and well up within us and set us free from the sins that bind us. We need a river of revelation, a river of Jesus, a river of love. Not a sip. Not a slip and slide. Not a trickle. But a life-giving baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Bow your hearts with me. Lord, there's a joy and there's a peace here this morning, yet there's a... Gosh, Lord, I can't describe how you've fallen upon us just... Now, it's not guilt... In my heart, Lord, it's just need. We need you. We need you, Father. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. And we're asking, and I'm praying for y'all, just like myself. We're asking, Lord, and I believe we've already stepped our foot into that season where we're hungry and thirsty for more of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm thankful for all the gifts that's been in operation for three or four months on a consistent basis. I'm thankful for a few healings that we've seen. I'm thankful, I'm not ungrateful. With it. Some have been saved. But Lord, please don't let the rock church. Holy Spirit, don't let us be satisfied with a trickle. And that's something you have to do in our hearts. And it's not just for today. This, I believe, would be a process for us as we walk into this season of where you become greater as we become less and less. And I pray this, Lord, over these wonderful people today. Is that even in our private time, even when we're, we're wherever we are, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Con I, I give you permission to convict our hearts because that's your love. And Lord, I would even pray this prayer. Cause us to hunger and thirst 
We need you to work. Holy Spirit, I guess what I'm saying is help. Help us. Help your church. Help your church. Help your church. Help your church.